up? This is Jai on another episode of Beer with Friends. Today is going to be a nice, fun one because we're talking about producers and getting things done. We're talking about some AFI producers, some amazing women that I had the privilege of meeting in this life. And I'm going to get into introducing them. But before we dive into that, I want to tell you about what our beverage is today. Today, we're drinking Figueroa Mountains Santa Barbara Shandy Mix. So we got a couple of different uh, types of shandies here. We got a mango lemonade. We got a citrus. We got a hibiscus lime and a watermelon. And uh, this is a really nice, easy day drinking. I love shandies when I'm on the boat or on the lake or doing something at the beach. It doesn't matter as long as my clothes are off in a respectable way. Uh, this is a 4.3% alcohol, which is fantastic. Uh, like I said, easy drinker. But I'm going to have myself and these ladies pop this. Very nice. And uh, if y'all have any inputs on these flavors, please tell me what you uh, think about it. Ooh, slurbage. <laughs> I could already taste like the, the hibiscus notes on mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could smell it before I... Got it to the mouth. Yeah. It's very light. It's nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like the, the concept of day drinking. Yeah. I'm all about this. Like a summer beer. I'm yeah. Like, this it's, is all your beer. What are you talking about? You know, it's like it's like uh, the common misconception <laughs> of drinking beer all day, right? It's like you could drink a beer like this all day, like yeah, in the sun, like without having to have too many worries on, on like, oh, my goodness, will I ever remember the rest of the evening? Well, I was going to say, it's like LaCroix with an edge and it's... There it, there it is. There it is. Dangerous, in other words. <laughs> so so the, the, the key dangerous. takeaway with this is you can have craft beers that aren't heavy. Mm -hmm. You can have all types of craft beers, but you got to dive into the different crafts of these craft beers. <laughs> and I usually favor a heavier beer. So if I find one I like that isn't. Yeah. So I'm digging this. I dig it too. Oh, man. Well, ladies, let me go ahead and uh, have y'all do... Your your, your 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 whole breakdown. We got Ashley and Joyce here, but uh, Ashley, tell them what's up. Hi. Well, thank you for having me on. Beow, beow. Big fan of the show. Yeah. Um, big oh. fan of beer. You know what? I love you guys too. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so cheesified. I love it. Um, <laughs> no. Um. Well, we met as you said through AFI. I was in the uh, producing program. The mm. the graduate producing program um a year above you yeah. but um i was you know touchdown what, yeah there we go <laughs> touchdown <laughs> rams <laughs> um and then i have since gone on to working in development houses uh which i didn't exactly favor and then now i'm back on the indie producing route so Cool. Yeah. cool, 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 cool. And Joyce? Oh, I met yes, oh, yeah. my lovely Joyce. Joyce. Yeah. <laughs> it was the question. I mean, we... <laughs> <laughs> Joyce, tell me about you. What's up? What's AFI your bio? as well. What's my like, vibe? Give your, give your vibe and your bio. What's your two minute? I, I lived, I've lived many lives before going to AFI. And yeah. so AFI is like a second career, actually, a third career move for me. Um, so I started out in like going the academic route. Mm -hmm. doing doctoral studies in clinical psychology, right? Super nerdy, super nerdy. And then um, <laughs> did corporate, worked in corporate HR for 13 years. And oh. I was like, I got to, the whole time aspiring to be this filmmaker, right? But I had no yeah. idea how to do it. Made a film, produced a feature before I went to film school, then applied to film school. I totally did things, can I swear on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, I totally went very like, open for <laughs> I like totally asked backwards, right? Yeah. Um, and then went to went to AFI where I met my lovely friend Ashley, and then a year later met my lovely friend Jai. So yeah, um, I feel like that's kind of what we all have in common, though. Correct me if I'm wrong. That we all kind of came from different backgrounds or different careers or different life experiences, and then somehow found our way to AFI, jumping in as a sort of second career. Am I yeah. wrong? You know, yeah, what or you, third. Yeah, well, or and third. Also <laughs> coming, going to AFI with a child. So I had a oh, family. Yeah. So That's he's our mascot. Really he's our, he's our, he's our, he is. He's our so mascot. So my son at that time was, oh gosh, was he 10, 9? I don't know. He will always be like five in my heart, it, dancing on the balcony. Now, right? <laughs> he's 14. He's 14. in high school. Yeah. What the fuck? I know. Oh my God. My, yeah. my son is starting JV running back. Oh my so, that's God. Because I met yeah. him also yeah, at graduation. a couple years ago. At graduation. Kids. <sighs> 
kids. They're not kids yeah. anymore, guys. I no, hate to break no. it to you. No, they're no, not no, kids they're, anymore. No, he's they're talking little about... stinking creatures. They stink. They smell. <laughs> oh my god, yes. Like he... saw new smells start coming out. Yes. He told me yesterday that he shaved. I was like, what did you shave? He's like, my upper lip and other parts. I'm like, what other parts? <laughs> Be careful. He's like, I shave. He's like, I, he's like, I'm growing hair in my arms. I'm like, how many hairs? I was like, you could just pluck them out. If you can count them, it doesn't count. <laughs> doesn't work. You can count them. Work. Yeah. Oh, man. No, oh, that's, that's hilarious. I, I would love to hear a little bit about the pre-life before AFI. Like, um, what got you into the idea that producing was something that made sense? Or maybe that was a general overall that you could use for multiple different aspects of your life, which is why I got into the idea of producing. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm curious. Well, for me... I think you know this story, Joyce, but when I was very little, I grew up here in in Los Angeles. Apparently, I'm a unicorn oh in Los Angeles. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just. This is kind of... I didn't actually learn about that that was a thing until I got to AFI, and people were like, wait, where are you from here? That That's a unicorn. I'm like, what is that? Nobody, yeah. Nobody's born and raised in Los Angeles, apparently, anymore. Yeah. But um, so Hollywood was sort of always in my backyard, and, um, you know, you see what you see on TV, and it, the magic of, of filmmaking or or television making and all the different things that sort of lives that people have when you watch them on TV. And it was very exciting to me. Um, and so I had always kind of wanted to be in it, you know, so I basically I wanted to be Indiana Jones growing up and they're like, that's not really a thing anymore. And I'm like, okay, I want to be an aviator. Yeah, you can't do that. You have asthma. I'm like, okay, what can I do? And I connected that, hey, we can make stories about these people. Yeah. So I fell in love in the very naive way with the, the magic of it all and whatnot. And I kind of stayed on that track. But various life circumstances, um, a very serious health thing hit me, took me out of undergrad for quite a few years. And so I was at a, at a crossroads of what do I do with my life now. Started going by way of kind of producing and marketing. I got my uh, one of my undergrad degrees in business with specialization in marketing, mm -hmm. and I loved helping brands, which is part of what I love about your show. So hey, <laughs> highlighting small businesses me, and brands. Me, meanwhile, we're gonna re reconnect these things, <laughs> but <laughs> some shifts in the in the government Fair system. <laughs> but uh, we're working this out. Yeah. But I but I loved watching. You know, I loved that aspect and helping people grow. Yeah, and then. When I found myself at a place, I knew I wanted to continue on with education. I wanted to go to grad school. Nobody else in my family prior had gone to grad school. And um, I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go for film. Started researching. I love to write. So it's like I originally was looking at going in for writing, but then I started to learn more about producing. And I think similar to what you said, you know, it gives you the ability. You're sort of the overall project manager. You're the captain of a ship. Yeah. So you know what's going on from soup to nuts, A to Z, when creating media. And I thought that that would be far more beneficial in the overall scheme because mm. it gives you some freedom to then go off and create later. And 100%. so I went, yeah. So I went for producing. I got my MFA there at AFI and um, I don't regret it. Burr, 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 burr. The hardest things I've ever done and I, I don't regret it. <laughs> I think I got one of these. <laughs> AFI. AFI. <laughs> You can check them out at aficonservatory.com. No, oh my God, you're such a good ambassador. You're like the best brand ambassador. Um, I mean, it was not easy, as we all know. It was not easy. But I, the skill set that I feel like I learned, and I, maybe you can agree, Joyce, or disagree, um, helped me greatly coming out. And, yeah, it's given me that the freedom that I was looking for originally going in. So I dig it. wasn't as creative as I thought. <laughs> right. It's a thankless job. But, yeah. but I do. I do. I'm happy that I did it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally understand. I'm going to piggyback on this too, but I want, I want to, I want to, I want to figure out this journey, Joyce, like the steps, because 13 years of human resource, that's a complete left turn. Well, so the funny thing is, right? This or right is probably, out of Albuquerque, one of the two. Well, no, well, this is a problem. <laughs> um, this would be like, actually, maybe my fourth career, because I was also a professional actor for many years, right? Yeah. And so... I think we both Dude, have a child and it totally upends your life, right? right? right. And so <laughs> I was an actor, I got pregnant, and I was like, oh, damn, I have to, like, feed this child. Like, he's on the grid, right? Like, yeah. I got to make sure he stays alive, right? So um, being an actor is hard because you're, you're always hustling. And so um, doing the HR work was very steady, um, but it, it didn't feed my soul as a storyteller, 
And because I'm really like my, the one kind of through line across my entire life has been a commitment to inclusion, mm -hmm. right. And representation. So really for, I have a, you know, I have a tattoo on my arm and it's, it's a ribbon that is a film strip. Uh -huh. Right. And the whole reason for that is that it means that I use film. I use media as my form of advocacy. And so how do I use storytelling, visual storytelling to, with representation for the underrepresented, for the marginalized. So, how, you know, how do, I, how do I use media in that way? And, you know, I worked as an actor, as rep you know, but as an actor, you have no control. No, that's you're, the thing. No. You don't have control when you're in that position. Because yeah. that was what I learned. And that's why, yeah. So you, as an actor, the most that you can do, like the most power you have is to say no to a role. Mm -hmm. Which is hard. hard. <laughs> right? Because the whole point is to audition for a role. To get cast. To but then get you get cast. cast in these crappy things, you know, like stereotype. Like, let me tell you oh, yeah. how many, like, <laughs> can you do an accent? It's like, okay, yeah. I could do what an accent. Have you also you worked in a Chinese restaurant? Are you okay with doing that? Like, I can <laughs> just yeah, hear yeah. the nail, nail salon. As yeah. I'm Asian American, right? So, yeah. nail salon, um, IT person. Ouch. Um, what else? Um, but yeah, yeah uh, but Chinese restaurant, any restaurant, takeout, you know, like that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, but because I'm a woman, also sex worker, you oh, know, yeah. yep. prostitute, whatever. I'll, so I was just like, we got to do better than this, right? And the only way for me to do that is to be in charge. Yeah. And that's what a producer does, yeah. right? A producer yeah. says, I'm picking the story. I'm putting together a team. And if I don't like something, guess who has the ultimate veto power to be like, that's messed up. We're not 100%. doing that, right? I, w I wish more actors can become more producers. Well, I feel sense. like I feel like they a lot of them are because after they get to a point in their career, they recognize what you're saying, Joyce, which yeah. is now they're at a place. It's kind of that earning their dues, you know. Or you see it a lot in music. You know, they start in the boy band or they do the thing, and they transition to doing something else or something on their own because now they have that star clout and of the power of some kind in their branding to do that. You know, yeah. Yeah. Christina Aguilera is a very good example. She started as a Disney kid, and then. You know, she had to do the bubblegum pop thing, and then now she's actually respected for her voice and what she knows in music. Yeah. So I feel like that's, you know, with actors, it's similar. I'm seeing more of them. Look, this is the one thing I'll say, though. I mean, there are different types of producers. Well, right? yeah. that, let's, that, let's, that, let's, that, let's break that, that down. down right? Let's break that <laughs> There's down. different producers. And so I think what we learned at AFI was, and this is part of the reason why I went back to film school, is because I had produced a film before film school, right? And then I went back to film school to figure out how to do it right. Which, by the way, may I say, our entire class was like, whoa, who is this chick? She's already produced a film coming in. Are we, what are we doing with our lives? You were, you were just so <laughs> impressive to all of us. Was impressive? <laughs> you were impressive. And oh, I impressive. think to some, in, no, impressive. We were just like, who is this person who has all this knowledge? <laughs> but so here's a funny thing, right? Being a woman of color, right? I am always in, and you probably experienced this too, always in a position where you have to overprove yourself. Yeah. Right. So mm. no matter what you do, it doesn't ever seem good enough. And so like, and I, I don't mean to offend anyone out there, but there are times no, when no, I, no I, I use this thing called WWWDD. What would a white dude do? Right. Hey. No, it's, it's, not a bad, it's, not it's, a bad, it's, it's a thing. WWDDD. Right. So like if, if I was like a white dude, I'd be like, look at the film I made. I'm the shit. But because I'm a woman of color and having, mm -hmm. you know, lived my whole life being undervalued and under like, undercredited yeah. that I don't value that credit yeah. you yeah. know like there's if you look at like my resume it'd be like oh shit she did all these things and I look at it and I go but oh. you still didn't do it you still didn't do this thing you still I didn't still do haven't that, done yeah. that but yeah. I still not there yeah. and what do I need to do to get there and everybody's like you just need to pump it up like a white dude and I'm like yeah. oh like, no I'm gonna I'm gonna adopt that now the <laughs> WD WDD <laughs> what do I do do but it's true because I think for female person of color or not that that's always the first thing and then if you are a person of color or as a mutual friend of all of ours calls it um chris kinsley she calls those of us who are mixed or even white passing mixed fits so for mixed any of fits. us yes so, so I'm i love these giving, words i'm giving her this credit because i and i told her <laughs> do something with this word if she does not or this phrase but for any of us i think if we are a minority or if we are mixed that that's an additional layer of it as we all know um, 100%. So yeah, I, I love that. W -W 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 -D. <laughs> because it's true how they would go in and do something, even if they don't necessarily, not to offend anybody, but 
anybody who feels Dunning Kruger. Yes, I, th- I always. <laughs> oh, see, what, I'm going to drop all the psychology that? on you because yeah, yeah, obviously yeah, my yeah, first but... graduate degree in psychology. Right. My first yeah, graduate my first... degree in psychology. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not She's a complex, ladies and gentlemen. The complex, but yes, go on. Tell me about your first. <laughs> First nest is not career. proving her point at all. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, so, you know, well, yeah, so I got my first graduate degree in clinical psychology with a focus on multicultural mental health, which yeah. means really like my, my thesis, my master's thesis was actually on implicit bias and how it Im- impacts the way that clinicians work with their patients or their clients, right, yeah. in a therapeutic setting. Yeah. Super nerdy. But, you know, the through line is the implicit bias and how we see that show up, not just in a clinical setting, but like how it shows up just interacting, right? I, I went to this panel at Netflix the other day. It was a diversity panel, fantastic panel. And a speaker was talking about his friend who had transitioned from male to female, okay. transgendered, right? Yep. And he asked his friend, he said, what's the major difference you've experienced being a woman compared to being a man? Mm. And his friend said, oh, I get interrupted way more now as a woman. Interesting. So how does our implicit bias kick in in the way that we interact with others, not even realizing it, those small little behaviors that for her, you know, for her to actually see and to compare receive. the difference yeah. and be like, oh, I get interrupted just because I'm a woman now. So how does that show up in our work as filmmakers? How does that show up in our work? And not just like what's on screen, but how do we interact with our crew, our cast? How do we make those casting decisions? 100%. Right? 100%. So. Yeah, no, it, it's really interesting because I always, obviously, coming from uh, the black side of the scale, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, and being a male, the marginalization is, it, it feels the same, right? But the strange thing is, there's also the pride aspect within the culture, you know? So as a male, even other black males are still judging me whether or not I'm at the level that they deem worthy to work with, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's something that we're always battling and we're always shifting because my goal is always to, I'll always be best as myself, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and I'm very grateful, very grateful that I'm a, I'm a king of jacks. I can do a lot of jacks of all trade things and I can run a lot of systems doing them because you can do those things. That also doesn't mean people want you involved. That just means you're self-sufficient, you know? So it's, it's, it's that same issue. How do you as the help you need while you're going forward? How do you find the communities you need? You can find one community Saying, hey, you know, we're, we're a bunch of uh, Afro-Latino filmmakers and we're going to do this. And then you meet everyone and you're like, it's almost that quote, if you're the smartest in the room, you should probably go to a different room. room right? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and it's not to, to, to shit on anybody. It's the process. Like, I've been out in mm-hmm. L.A. for 11 years, you know, before this was in the Navy as an IT with the NSA. You know, and working all these different things and coming from dance to to modeling to acting, which is what brought me here. And then to get into the producer's world where now I'm like, oh, people I understand too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I get what you we, we're thinking the same yeah. stuff. Cool, man. This is dope. Meanwhile, we're back there. It's just like, it's not my method. Well, and I think you've touched on a very important thing there. But, <laughs> but it's about finding your community. And I think yeah. that in, in, in the past, a lot of it has been those cultural identifiers or even racial identifiers. You're, you look like me or you came with the same culture. You must be like me. But, and I'm sure in the black community and me, Afro-Latin, but being mixed, that is so complex. You know, if, if you talk about Latin America and the politics just within them, yep. meanwhile, and, you know, I have friends that are El Salvadorian and Mexican and Cuban and, you know, and they all argue, which is better. They argue about their cultures. I'm like, meanwhile, everybody, th- the world thinks you all are Mexican. Like, yeah. it's just, <laughs> it, but it, this, is, this is, I mean, when I tell people where I'm even from, my family's from, they are, they're not even counted as Afro-Latino because, again, so many politics. So I can't, and being white passing, I can't. When I go into them, like you're saying, you, yes. whether it be actors or you have some sort of cultural um, connection, they still don't fully accept me. So yeah. I have learned, mm-hmm. you know, and I feel in a weird way it's a blessing because it has forced me to cultivate a group that is actually truly diverse, but that we come together in the meeting of the minds or the heart because that's what we have in common. And because of our different experiences, we actually can add something to the table in a very genuine and authentic way. Yeah. So mm-hmm. in a in a way it has allowed me to 
to really cultivate a wonderful network of people that I love dearly yeah. that I don't think always happens. But at the same time, you know, kind of what you're talking about, especially in the acting community, because I worked with, well, slightly name drop here for just a second, but I worked with Mila Kunis recently, and she was talking about at the time she was coming up, and you can see it in the thing, but at the time she was coming up, she had, you know, dark hair and it was curly, and just that enough was enough was enough to label her ethnic. Yep. And so they put her in for all the bully roles and they put her in for yep. all the women of like, well, not women, but like girl, like, you know, cool girl roles. And she didn't understand at the time, but she said she, she kind of started to, it's like, why do I keep going out for bully auditions? It's, it's even that subtle. Yeah. It's it's like me getting a uh, gangster rose with my curly exactly. mustache. Exactly. <laughs> they're like, you know, we can look past the mustache. That actually might be really hood. Yeah. It's like it's not. Can you hold a gun well? It's like, not it's, it's really like, hood. I'm going to be honest. This is actually very classic. That was yeah. the point. Um, but I appreciate it. I think actually prohibition era. I can yeah, see you when you're like, I, like to me, you're throwback to like the 20s. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like, a classic vibe. It's that, a classic. You think of, when I look, when I see your mustache, I think of like, okay, you know those boxers from the 20s, yeah. right? With like yeah. the they, the whole <laughs> their hands like this, you know. Yeah, the whole thing. That's that's what I see you. Uh, yeah. See, and I weirdly see my in front of a uh, one of the old like crank trucks yeah. like in prohibitionary and he's got his hat on and he's just sitting there with his bow tie he's just <laughs> looking at that camera and he is so damn proud that's, how <laughs> that's what it is with the with the wonderful crafts beer that he is yes. yeah. and, running and somewhere, somewhere. Hat. Right. Hat. exactly right. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so but but, that, but that's you that's so quintessentially you and you have found that and that's what we now all have identified and love about you so yeah, yeah and i appreciate that you know and that, and but like that's the jam yeah that's actually the jam yeah you know and um, the interesting thing, which will actually lead us to this next stage, <laughs> um, the idea of producing, you know, producing isn't just doing a film. Producing is the idea of organi organizing your thoughts and ideas and dreams and putting them into a tangible mean to um, accomplish them. And that can go with your personal life. You can go with your hobbies. You can go with. Uh, your creative projects. It could go with your family. You know, there's so many different ways. It's not saying canceling out spontaneity and 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 anything you do because that is creative work. There's always a twist. There's always a shift. Has anyone ever been on set? There's always something we're not prepared for. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Well, this this kind of brings me back. I want to come back to that topic, but not everybody like there are different kinds of producers, right? Yeah, what's it? Let's first identify, right? or maybe for an audience. Explain really what a producer is in, in one line, because there are so many. <laughs> and there are producers, producer. quotes, air quotes, air and there, quotes, are, right? there are producers, and there are film producers, and there are theater producers, and they're very different types of producers. Right, right. Well, no, like, so I think about, and the, I think the part of the reason why we found our community mm -hmm. is because there are certain qualities at AFI, at least, going, you know, who gets in, the, who thrives at AFI, yeah. who graduate, because, you know, not everybody in our class ended up graduating. Mm -mm. You know, there are people who came in after the first year and they're like, oh, shit, this is producing. I'm out. Yeah. yeah you yeah, know? They're right, yeah. Right? We don't get fame. Or, you know, we, we don't, don't get, get fame. <laughs> so this is what, but let me really, the nuts and bolts of like the true kind of lead producer, right? Mm -hmm. The lead creative producer. It's soup. You, you take something from soup to nuts and you start with the concept. You put together the team. You help with development. You go through and you do, you crew up. You, you, go, you make casting choices, you know? But then you, you're basically a leader. Yeah. Right. You're a leader, but you get none of the credit. Yeah. Well, I say it's like it's if, it's an expedited form of setting up a business, except unlike a business where everyone knows you're the owner, it's the crew below you that everybody knows actually works there. You know what I mean? So because so much of that and having come from owning a small business, oops, as I sm like hit the mic on that. my hands, <laughs> going everywhere. Um, it is, you know, there's nothing, right? Essentially, there's nothing in the ether. And then we have an idea, we have a screenplay written, we have a book we want to adopt, you know, adapt. And all of a sudden, it becomes a script. It becomes this thing in a tangible form on yep. paper. And from there, we now start creating worlds and setting up a business, essentially, to make this come to life in a, in a form of story. Yeah. And everything that that, as you said, entails. So crewing up and getting the permits. And depending on the type of producer you. Well, so there's, I mean, so you have like, I mean, I think what we learned at AFI was really doing a lot of the physical production mm -hmm. and doing kind of the handhold, like 
you essentially, to be a great producer, which I'm still learning and trying to develop my skill set, but like you have to be an amazing leader. Yep. You have to be emotionally intelligent. Yep. You have to be, you have to inspire people. People right? need to want to listen to you. Exactly, they right? Need, they, so that means you have to have the emotional intelligence to tap into their needs. Mm -hmm. And know like, how to respond to them, yeah, right? Because not everyone, some people you could be like, dude, shut up and go get it done. Other people will need, look, it's cool. It's cool. Let's let's handle this. What, yeah. what what's the problem? Let's start there. Yeah, and then we'll work work through step by step. Okay, so what you actually need is another hand. Yeah. you need yeah. another human resource. Cool. Hey, uh, okay, we're running the office wonderfully because it's our office. And, uh, <laughs> hey, can you step in over there and just go ahead and give a little hand? We're gonna go make sure we put this down and get that done. Mm -hmm. And so the thing about being a producer, right, is, is also that it's a thankless job. Yes. Right? So, like, everyone I know who has continued to, has longevity in the business is someone who just gives of themselves without yeah. asking for anything in return. Yeah. But there are people who get into producing because they want to be famous, right? Very different kind of producer. Yep. Don't get, a, don't let them get involved with, like, people. Yes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> don't let them near yeah. people. <laughs> right? So, you know, so you have the, you have, like, and then you have, like, the executive producers who bring the money yep. and, like, you know. Have or yeah. the star cloud no, or the way. Yeah. Star, right? But they're not involved in those executionists. Nuts and bolts. <laughs> like, yeah. exactly. Well, I also say, and this this is why I have seen you now. Like you said, we, we met Orion, your son, when he was very young, and now he is almost a man. But I feel like producing. <laughs> too soon. It's too soon. It's too not ready for it. <laughs> um, but producing to me, it's like it's the ultimate boot camp for parenting. Or if you're already a parent, I feel like those skills, because I've watched you as a mother and you are an incredible mother. And I feel, but truly, you know, and, and that's people think, oh, just because we're women, we should just know how to do these things. And yes, some of it, I suppose, is intuitive. But as you said, all the skills that you, you just, know my relationship with my brother. No, that yeah, is not that, true. This is my point. You're that not born is a common skills. misconception also. And I think with your background in psychology and, and just all of your former careers, and then that experience married with having a family coming into AFI, I feel like that's what made you just don't, a wonderful, yeah, producer. Dope sauce is what she's yeah, saying. exactly. In a very, <laughs> very <laughs> loquacious <laughs> way right now. Um, but, 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 <laughs> Dope she sauce. is the dope sauce. Dope I love sauce. it. <laughs> but truly, because everything you just labeled off, right? Emotional intelligence and kind of what you were speaking to, Jai, of rapid problem solving and the objectivity to be able to quickly jump out of a problem when someone else, why do I keep doing this? No, no, no. You have action hands. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> casting a spell over here, just in time for Halloween. Um, but. Um, being able to look at a problem very quickly and then the, whatever the person who's coming to you who may be emotional, you have to be able to separate that quickly, look at the objectivity of what's going on, and then tend to them. These are things that you, as a wonderful parent, do, but I feel like for a lot of us, I mean, it, it is. That's why I think they call pro real producers, you know, parents of a set. Because well, I, Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I completely agree. And I think yeah. my best analogy to what a film producer is, is a camp counselor. There you go. You get a bunch of random people that show up on the day. They're like, what do we got to do? Someone's like, look, tell them what to do. And That's hope normally they do us. It. And then the first AD or second AD or someone's going to talk to the team. And then they go ahead and say their piece. And then it's like, cool. And then you walk around and check on people. And make sure blow that your they whistle. Have, yeah, you blow your whistle. You can make sure they got some coffee. Lunch they time, yeah. Or even made it on look, time. We're on yeah. schedule. Look, I need to make sure y'all are out on time right. because your parents are going to get pissed off at me. <laughs> yeah. it can't Did you investors. eat? Did you? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're overtime now. Now this is no good. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Camp counsel. Have, that's a wonderful. <laughs> I just think it's so funny. Like, people always tell me, they're like, you seem the calm, so calm on set, right? You mean like everything... Shit yeah. is hitting the fan. Yep. You're so calm. And I'm like, because if I'm not calm, then we're really, really in trouble. Yeah. I like, yeah. then everybody will take that cue and like flip out. Yeah. Well, like you said, you have to be a leader, right? And then so whatever you're going through, you're going to put that out to the crew and they're going to react. And 100%. That's, yeah. That is, I think, a superpower of good producers. And it's funny when people meet me out, outside of my job, like, oh, you know, you're just, you seem calm. Like, you don't really get upset about stuff like this. <laughs> Right, it's an occupational hazard. Don't get in my brain. Yeah. 
<laughs> but you know the wor- world can be on fire, but we have to be calm. calm. But inside, you're like, holy, holy crap, shit. what's yeah, gonna happen yeah. if what I don't get this? Together? Yeah, it is like the, the the first day of shooting the thesis. Uh, two tents shot up in the air with 150 pounds of sandbags on them. Like that wind was so much. That's and intense. Then they flipped upside down with 150 pounds of weight on them. And it just, oh my god! I was like, I was like, this 400 dollars. I was like, this is day one. This is 400, and we're already over budget. And what are we going to do? And I needed that 400 like, for that extra food we got to do, I know, on Tuesday. No, okay. Check us out. So I was shooting music video, right? We had <laughs> dancers dancing in water with fire and oh torches. My okay, so my right? brain just exploded a okay. little. <laughs> so we had that. Oh, man, and then the amount of things. The only injury we had, right? The only injury was the client who fell backwards in her chair. <laughs> she fell back. She literally, whoop. Fell back in the, and I took her to the emergency much. room. Yeah. That was it. Everybody else was fine. The dancer dancing in water and like 30 degree like temperatures. It was oh, like, of oh, all TV. things. Of all things. That, that's what. <laughs> but even there, there you go. That speaks to a lot of what we do. It's like we, it's a good day when nobody on the set is hurt. <laughs> oh, man. Just this, well, I, I think I've told you the llama story. I always tell people the llama story because when people are like, oh, you know, if they come to me and say, this thing's not happening, what are we going to do? And it's not coming together. And it's like, okay, we're not at llama level yet. If the people who know the story understand, yeah, like, no, no, what's no, llama no. level? You're going to have to give yeah. some insight so, on this. So I, I appreciate the llama, you. The llama so level. The llama, I, llama level. Llama the level. llama level. If you so, don't know, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know, you don't know. So one of the things I, to gain some, you know, onset experience before, you know, around the AFI time, I had worked on a short night, stepped in to help produce someone needed at the last minute and it happened to have a llama on set <clears throat> so our first day of shooting which Wait, you know i just want to just mention how just what a bizarro world we live in in entertainment they're like yeah. so it just happened to have a llama on set continue this is the, the, the weirdness that we deal with and the level of problem solving we have to be adept at <laughs> So there's a llama. I'm like, okay. And this is, you know, I hadn't really worked with animals a lot at this point. I'm like, okay. First day of shooting. It's the llama's big day. So if we don't get the first day, and all we all know, you know, there are always bumps and bruises on the first day, but if it gets severely off track, the rest of the shoot could be kind rough, of a, rough. a shit show. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm like, okay, so we <laughs> yeah. get the llama. The llama's call time is 8 a.m. The llama is not here. At 8 a.m.? <laughs> was, he was, well, the call Damn time was llama actually. sleeping in. Yeah, it was like supposed to be 7 a.m., I think, and then it got pushed to, I don't know what happened, but either way, the llama was not there. I'm freaking out, everybody, but I can't show this. Nope, 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 nope. nope. Everyone, the llama's, I'm like, it's okay, guys. And in my head, I'm like, what am I going to do if the llama and, the, and, and his trainer don't show up? The, okay, the llama and the trainer didn't show up. <laughs> at all? Didn't show up. So now I have to go so find a, a llama. Show. Well, so people that I was working with, and again, I was new to this. So, and me with the, just like you, <laughs> the perfectionists have to prove myself. I'm like, no, I got to find the llama. Luckily, and that's, I think, a perk of growing up here is I, I know random places we can find llamas. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I, I'm racking my brain. I'm like, okay, we got more park exotic animal <laughs> training center. We have my friend's that's neighbor who happens stuff. to have llamas and lives on a ranch. We have... <laughs> Let me start making these phone calls. Long story short, we there found it. There are ranches in LA, <laughs> yeah. ladies and gentlemen. There are, there are ranches, ranches. There are oceans. There are mountains. There are ranches. There's there are llamas. beaches. There are these flash, There are llamas in LA. There are lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Um, but long story short, I managed to find the llama. But this is like to me. I've used that ever since because it's like until we get to llama level, we're fine. Like everybody, calm down because that's just such an absurd story. And it's like if we can find a llama. We can figure out how to get ice to crafty. I promise you. Like, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Look, I remember the first time I needed an animal on set. It was a duck, right? And I had Piper. And uh, she was, uh, what, God, she had to be nine months old. And we did our first shoot. And I bought this duck with the dog on set. (laughs) The duck, to do it professionally, and this was like my first pay, like first shoot, my first everything. Like, I had a budget of two thousand dollars to do <laughs> to do something and i was like i'm doing everything and i like like i hired i hired the, the the models i hired i did the cat i did the wardrobe i did the makeup i did all the stuff i produced the entire thing and um it's called beauty boys you'll never see it and, um, <laughs> i know right all the titles we don't want i'm like that's why i'm not telling the llama <laughs> but but the duck the cost to do it like mm-hmm. for the studio was seven hundred dollars for the duck I was like, there's no way I'm going to spend $700 with a $2,000 budget for a duck. 
especially when everyone else still needs to eat and shoot and rentals and blah, blah. I was like, wow. So to have a llama issue, I can only imagine the amount of intensity and stress because they're not as prevalent as ducks. They're not as prevalent. And I have to tell you, they are far, they have a lot more attitude. Yes. yes. They are not as compliant as I would assume ducks might be. Ducks seem to be kind of the ADHD ones. They just sort of wander and quack. Llamas are are divas. They are moody as hell. But, but yeah, and then, but when I got to AFI, the first, you know, short we did for cycle, I ended up with children and animals. What was your first cycle? It was with Omer. Shout out to Omer. Um, we did the one with the kid and he had the hamster. <laughs> Oh, and Betsy, yeah. who was the head of our, our uh, production, and she's Did you like, have, to have like a hamster wrangler. We like, had to have a, a humane yeah. society. So, so yeah. Carrie, yeah. again, you shout out to Carrie Daly, things. who was our That's hamster right. wrangler and provided our hamster. Um, it was a whole thing, though, just just to have the hamster on set. He played. It was a, a pet for our character, but the hoops we had to jump through on a what forty two hundred dollar budget yep. to nice. get the hamster. Um, yeah. and then people were afraid of the hamster because it was close to mice and they were afraid of mice. That was fun. And yeah, the child. <laughs> Speaking of animals, we had, so my thesis, right? We were on a horse oh, farm, yes, I was like, I right? And like, we're, because we're, you know, we have a very low budget. So they're like, oh, you can't afford, if you want to touch the horses, you have to pay $200 to touch the horses. <laughs> and if you want to be featured in our film with the proper credits, you're going to let us touch the horse, not for $200. Well, so then the thing is, like, our workaround was, like, our actress went up to the horse, and the horse touched her. Oh, there you go. She didn't initiate the touch, and the horse, like, nudged her, and we're like, we got the shot! <laughs> Without paying the $200. Outside the box <laughs> thinking for <laughs> producers. Like, that's the cornerstone of being a producer, ladies whenever and gentlemen. You're working, whenever you're working with horses, bring sugar. Yeah. <laughs> bring some sugar. No. Sugar, cubes. Story, bring sugar. sugar cubes in your craft? Don't kit. worry about me. Yeah. It's, it's part of my production kit. Coffee. I like it in my tea. <laughs> Coffee. That happens to be near horses. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. I love that. Uh, I am curious as far as how AFI has supported what you've been doing in your goals. <laughs> <laughs> These shandies. <laughs> but, like, obviously, we got the network and everything moving forward, which y'all got going on. Touchdown. Woo-hoo. And, um, <laughs> Which I'm not talking about a game that might be on that a uh, Texas team might be winning in a certain We're state. not going to talk about Texas team winning right now. <laughs> we're oh, God, yeah. We're, we're not going to talk about this. anything. We're not going to give any dates of this <laughs> of this time period. But um, no, seriously. Let's, let's, <laughs> coming from AFI, story. like, could you have achieved what you're doing now without AFI? No. 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 I will say, yeah. And I think just what you said, the network, I think, was the most invaluable part. And I don't know that everybody would agree, but again, it's I feel blessed to have cultivated this group of people, all of you. And I think that, for at least me, I don't know about you, Joyce or Jai, but that for me, like I said, has been the most invaluable by far. It, and, and just having, and having the name, frankly, I mean, I'm not even going to lie on that. Yeah. I mean, if just the fact that I have a graduate degree from AFI, people are like, oh, so do you want to produce an entire show? And it's like, how do you know I even actually is going to win? Have you ever had to show your degree? No. no. <laughs> Me neither. No. no. I, I, I literally this is left t- it in the package for about yeah. a year and a half. And I, then I handed it to my mom. I'm like, look, I feel like I haven't opened it. You should probably hold it closer. Good, like, just, just yeah. you know, keep it safe. <laughs> keep it safe. I'm not going to lie, I, I got real bougie and I paid to have mine framed because I'm like, if I pay that much for the degree, I'm going to pay that much to put it on the wall and make it no, no. worth something. It totally but, makes sense. But I, it took me a while. To, I don't. I think they sent it to the wrong address originally. I don't know. It took me forever to get it. But, but no, I've never had to show my degree. Just yeah. the name. And then even from some of my undergrad, depending on the networks there, but all of that has helped. And, and then if, if they look on LinkedIn and they see that I'm, you know, have matriculated with certain people at school, right? They're in my network or Instagram. Instagram has weirdly been very helpful. (laughs) Um, Not surprisingly so, but, you know, just seeing that network, people are like, oh, okay, you're legit because you know this person and you claim to have gone to AFI. Let me me interview you. I got got tested twice. I got tested twice by people who are like, what? What? What was that? What was that? What was that? They're like, you went to AFI. Oh, throwing shade. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was uh, one of four black producers out of 28 selected out of 680 applicants. 
outside of that, I mean, like, does my name, was I in the Navy? You know, do, do, do I exist? You know, is my life not valid because of your decision of where your mindset is when you're interacting with me? Implicit bias. Yeah. <laughs> Implicit bias. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we got to so, improve ourselves. It's like, you don't blame me for like, you don't believe it. Just straight up like, I'm like you know what? It again. I'm yeah. like, I didn't even tell you I was the mascot for the Dodgers. <laughs> 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 Trump card. There you go. Block. There you go. <laughs> Which, by the way, we'll have to do another episode of this just talking about Dodgers and beer because I know we have that love together. So. All, all about it. All oh, about we'll it. Every time I see beer. you at the game, I'm like, you never hit me. Ugh. I, know, I forget. Okay, I legit forget because to me, you are Jai the producer, funnily enough. The yeah, irony yeah. of you talking yeah, about this right now. You are Jai the producer, Prohibition era, now, <laughs> now, now update. That is how I think of you. And so it's never till later that I'm like, oh, yeah, Jai, Dodgers. <laughs> You are so not branded to me in my mind right. as a Dodgers guy, but more as a producer, funnily right. enough. Totally and the beer guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, no, I got to put you on. It's those things. It's like those chapters. It's like, which chapter are we on? Yeah, exactly. Like, we're on the beer guy chapter? Or? So okay. which which of those many jacks of all trades, which trade are you on, right? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no. There's always three to five at a time. Um, so like, y'all don't even know. Um, I'm actually going to intern at SoundCloud and publishing next oh, hey, at the beginning just to learn what publishing means awesome for bringing in independent yeah. artists exactly. and doing everything i'm at icon uh collective here in burbank look just at you doing the whole thing just expanding like you know i feel well, like you should be like i feel like you should be like have your own management company where you produce what like your artists because i feel like you have you're very so entrepreneurial yeah. right <laughs> No, you we're, know it's a good thing. It is. It is, is a good it's thing. It's the organization. Yeah, it's the of organization it. of getting everything. Which one are you going to do one. right now? Yeah. Right. But that yeah. and also, like producing, each project is per project. You know, so it gets difficult when you're trying to do multiple projects and produce multiple. 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 Um, <laughs> that beer's kicking in. It's kicking. See, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget that it is in fact beer. It's that good. We forget. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, um, go, just kind of going through, okay, what do you pull the trigger on first? You know, so like when we did Beer Run the show, uh, or Beer Run the actual show, oh, shit, I guess it sounds the same. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's also on Instagram, Beer Run the show. You can check like, out the website, Beer Run the, the show. show. Beer Run the show. Beer Run the show. You can but, also follow him on, at least it on Instagram and where else? Also YouTube. Also called Beer Run the show. <laughs> But when we were doing the show, Beer Run, mm -hmm. um, it just, it seemed to make the most sense for the time during the pandemic. No, right? I, I feel like that was a kismet thing. It could have only happened in that way under those cir circumstances. 100%. Not that you couldn't have made the show. You absolutely could have. But it would have but had a different. Different feel. And I think that that's what inspired me because we have discussed, the, you know, where we all were at that time. And 100%. Even when I saw it, I was so inspired by it because, again, my background in marketing and a little bit of psych and, and, and but working with small businesses, that's that's a, my own personal love and passion. And to see what you were doing in a time of crises for everybody, yeah. I felt like it brought people together in such a wonderful way. I'm like, that's what our country needs right now. This is your it was just there were so many layers to it to see a friend of mine who had a dream who's making it happen about something he loves that happens to bring other people together. Like I said, in a time where it's needed yeah. and people were having conversations and people things we just sadly don't do anymore. So yeah, yeah, I mean, it you just know, it hit human everything. communication at its most open. That that was the point, yeah. you know, and, and you hit it and, right on the head. You in know, my the, opinion, the hardest thing working with corporate and getting this idea sold. Because you could say Anthony Bourdain all day. Mm -hmm. But there's only one Anthony Bourdain. Yeah. You know, so what are, what are you doing that's different? And how is that working on our operation systems? You know, so it's like, all right, cool. You can be as open as you want, but you still need to sell. You still, and actually, let's talk about that for a minute, right? Because you yeah. had brought it up before. And I think development is a key part, especially as producers and directors, which I think you and I both have now ventured into inadvertently, <laughs> loving it. But, um, you know, development is a very large part of that. And a lot of people outside of our world don't know what that means. And I don't know about you, but that 
to me is where we have to have a lot of the shift. You know, you're talking about diversity, Joyce, having con- even, you know, interned for similar reasons you have in development houses and learning what that side of it looks like. 100%. I'm still v- frankly very shocked at how short-sighted different departments of development can be. Yes. And yes, we, we create art, right? At, at the end of the day, it's art. It is subjective, but it is a business. And I always say, anytime you monetize art, it becomes a different story. And yep. those, I think that become successful in this business, understand that balance. 100%. However, I think too much of it does lean, especially now, you know, to that corporate branded IP business tendency of only making money. And I think the people at the helm of a lot of them have lost that vision of art and creativity yeah. that is needed to sell the thing. That doesn't mean you necessarily can make something super obscure and it's going to get, so, you know, I understand why they don't want to touch that, but I don't understand why they will only touch Marvel. Yeah. I don't understand why they will only touch Anthony Bourdain and he was amazing. Here we go again. I'm just hitting everything. Touchdown. Touchdown. Um, <laughs> hitting the mic, hitting the mic. I'm getting riled up now. But Anthony Bourdain was, was amazing and what he did, gave to the world was amazing. But like you said, there's only one Anthony Bourdain. But yeah. there is room for other people other, and other, other you know, voices, niches, other voices. Other and you tapped into that. And to me, your show, well, it will be a hit. But why it's not a hit, or why people have not distributed that at, or jumped on a bandwagon to fight to distribute that is a question to me. I've been, I've been thinking about that a lot, too, because I what I feel s- strongly is how do you define something we don't own? You know, and the fact that we did everything in-house, which is technically what you need to do as creatives right now if no that's one's going to support hustle. you. Yeah, that's that hustle. It's, 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 it's almost hustle. like, a du- it, it, you know, you're damned if you do, you damned if you don't, but you <laughs> hopefully you, you time it right and you go ahead and make it through the Temple of Doom. You know? It, <laughs> it, Love that. <laughs> but, it, but it's true because, and that's why I say, yours was the meeting of, of it being kismet in timing and yeah. it was that opportunity meeting readiness and you guys had your part together so when everything happened you were able to hit the road and do it yeah. Yeah. um but that in and of itself is a miracle right <laughs> yeah. It's made it's a yeah. miracle. Just, just, just being but, able to get it done like putting what we had a team of six because that was the protocols six people can enter a venue during during the, the whole process it seems like a lifetime ago now yeah so we have <laughs> One driver, one yeah. driver, and we did 20, 21 days on the road. And we shot all up the Pacific Coast. And, like, honestly, if y'all haven't checked this out, man, y'all go check this out, beerruntheshow.com. Go check out Beer Run the Show on IG. I'm going to get into this a little more. Y'all should already know because here we are yep. uh, rocking this out. But we're running out a little at a time at this time. I know. So I want to get into these last two topics. Yeah. Last two topics are, what do you hope to contribute in your journey moving forward? You know, and what are some words of advice for some young ladies walking in your footsteps or figuring out where they need to go or anyone else in the industry that can go ahead and take from your words and utilize and build on their own thing? I think about like... I mean, I definitely, on my vision board, I have an Oscar. <laughs> um, and, you know, an Oscar for Best Picture because that's the producer's award, yeah. you know? Yeah, sure um, but, sure you know, getting an Oscar for something that is is pushing the boundaries of storytelling and really representation so that it's, you know, I mean, like I look at Parasite and I'm like, shit, I'm going to do like that, you know, one day. And it's not just about the Oscar, though. It's about pushing our entire industry in a direction that is much more inclusive and that like all our stories matter. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and but, but basically you could play kick, kickball together. Everybody. In the right? you, you can be on my, like we're all on the same team. <laughs> yeah. Right. Cause I always talk about coalition. Yeah. Right. And it's not about like, cause even though I may be Asian American, I'm also uncomfortable in spaces where I'm like all Asian American. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I am spaces that are diverse. Right. Yeah across the spectrum. And so I want that kind of what our world to look like, Yeah, you know, but to win an Oscar, just for me, my personal, you know, like fulfillment is win an Oscar, make enough money to like being a producer, yeah, to, to, live. to live and to like, 
you know, be one day move retire in Santa Fe, yeah. New Mexico, and like start an arts complex. No kidding, right? No, no, no. Start yeah, an arts so complex they there. Come visit you there, right? <laughs> but like something where I leave a legacy, and mm-hmm. then I can continue my work, and then I mean, because you know, I'm seriously, I'm on the other. To me, all I see is the road, the the shortening of the road ahead of me. Now yeah. I'm not. You know what I mean? Like it's not like oh, I'm so young. Like look, when I graduate, like I graduated in 2018. And people don't question that I went to AFI, but they went. They question that I graduated in 2018 because they assume because I'm older. What you just graduated? Uh, 27 isn't that old. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, for someone to be in their fourth career and like be yeah. an emerging creator, people yeah. are like, "What mm-hmm. is that?" So I feel like I, you know, anyway. But no, but I love that because. So I'm going to tap on one other thing. I saw. Um, I saw a musician recently. I was lucky enough. I was at. Um, Marcus Mumford's concert and they had an opener Danielle Ponder which I'm going to plug her for a second because she's amazing but she part of her story not only was she an an incredible vocalist I mean brought people to tears I mean you could just feel it but she was in her 40s she had a whole career as a lawyer she was helping to defend particularly people in the black community that were falsely incarcerated and she loved what she did but she felt so connected to music and the arts that she's like you know I think that this needs to be a thing for me and now she's killing it and that was one of the things she brought up is just because you're in your 40s or just because you're older doesn't mean you can't have multiple careers and doesn't mean that starting a creative career at 40 doesn't mean you can't make it and she's living proof of that so I actually think it's very inspiring for people just because they're not 21 (laughs) going to grad school or starting a creative career I I think we need to see more stories uh, again in that diversity I completely agree and also we're not in the age that we grew up no. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. there's no reason to carry on the stipulations of what was expected on us mm-hmm. at the time that our parents were going through the same expectations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's a different world. We're in a digital world. There are more opportunities mm-hmm. to find things. And I almost feel we're stifling, especially like our generations and a little bit younger, um, ourselves in the idea of what we actually can do. You know, like we are the medium. We're the transition between the communication of those who have come before and those who are coming right now. And meanwhile, both sides think we're pretty cool. Yeah, I'm pretty damn cool. But we're that bridge. We are that bridge. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of dope. It's kind of dope. Like, but my son called me the other day. He's like, "Hey, pops." I'm like, "What's up?" You tell these fools that that you're the mascot for the Dodgers. I was like, no, you tell them. He's like, I did. They don't believe me. I'm like, why don't they believe you? Do you talk too much shit? He's like, no, they just don't believe you because no one else's dad is mascot for the Dodgers. <laughs> well, yes, there's only like, one. I was like, all right. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, that makes a lot of sense. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Just put me on speaker. I was like, what's up? What's your job? I'm like, I'm the mascot for the Dodgers. He's like, thanks, dad. All right, bye. <laughs> that's too funny that's too funny I, I love that we can challenge the like kind of like the boundaries of what is supposed to be our age or what we're yeah. supposed to do like those yeah. stereotypes you it's know like a, a, or those ba- yeah, yeah the boundaries right and just saying like I can be as youthful as I want or as creative as I want or I can mm, be yeah. as, you know it doesn't I'm doesn't I'm not held to certain kind of because I think of like my in-laws right they're yeah. boomers right bless their heart they're lovely people but my mother-in-law grew up with she went to college University of Oregon got her degree in home economics. Oh, oh man, she there makes the best eggs. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but like home economics. So, 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 so see how far. Right. Like, like I don't have to be a housewife. Mm-hmm. I don't have to be like I don't have to look at, you know, retirement as like, oh, we're gonna go on a cruise now and like, sixty five and that's yeah. so old, which is so not old. And, you know, yeah. I have I, I, the, yeah. the way I see it is I have decades still to create yeah, art. You do. You know? I, I was literally thinking about this. Um, and the fact that because of technology and medical aspects and everything, I should technically have another 70 years. 70 years. That's a lifetime. You know what I'm saying? And, and we all have this capability if we think of today as our beginning. You know, take everything we learn and everything we've grown from and take today and move into it in a way that feels better than we've ever thought we could. You know, even no matter what we're going through, you know, there's always the ups and downs, but it is the process of life. Mm-hmm. Our power is is in the palm of our hands and it's in it for us. It's in our 
ability to communicate to those who also are seeking it and can't articulate it. And um, I think that's pretty damn dope. And I'm going to jump in just to give my advice or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So sorry. So, no, because it's on that, right? Yeah. Of So the, the thing I hope to do here in the near future, um, I want to be a showrunner. So I, I hope to get, I guess in my case, it would be an Emmy <laughs> instead of an Oscar. But Girl. You can get all of them. Well, this, I might go for the EGOT. I'm, I'm, I, I might go for the EGOT. I'm all about <laughs> Emmy, Oscar. That's <laughs> my doing. my plan. Um, the Emmy part of like, oh no, it's on the road, road to exactly, Oscar. Okay. Exactly. But but Do the it. but the point is again, I think <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have that in common though. We just want to be able to continue to make great art and actually make a living doing it. Is mm-hmm. I think the point, right? Mm-hmm. So that yeah. in my in my own personal goals, that's that's the point. But in terms of advice, and it's kind of touching on what you're talking about, is put your money where your mouth is. Yep. And I mean that because, and that's sort of, you know, the, the cliche of invest in yourself, but, you know, whether it be a development execs or us, if you're putting your money w- with what you're saying, and if you're putting your time, and if you're investing the things that matter into whatever you're saying, that's what matters to me. And that's what I would tell any of especially females, is there are going to be a lot of times, you know, we're hoping to change that for the generations that come after us, but, you know, um, it may not be done in time. So, you know, you're, they're still going to get into rooms where they're not going to be taken seriously. And they they have to, it is a cliche, but they have to believe in themselves and they have to know, 100%. you know, be ready, do your research, do your homework. So when that opportunity, like it came for you, comes, you are ready to take that on and you won't question yourself yeah. when someone else does. And that saying it's like, you know, it's like when when pre- pre- preparation meets opportunity. opportunity. That's what I'm saying, readiness, well, that opportunity well, is readiness. My mother's favorite statement. Proper preparation mm-hmm. prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And some a lot yeah. of times, you know, it, I'd like to think we don't have only one shot in this in this industry. But in a lot of times, you know, we work hard for that one door to open. So do as best as you can to make sure you're ready when that door does open. Yeah. And kind of talking about what you said about, you know, we have a li- much longer lifespan, hopefully. Um than the people who came before us to do many different things. So why shortchange yourself? Yeah. And, and, and you're never too old to start. Never there, too old to did start. Did you know that there was a woman who start, she retired and she started a nonprofit in her 70s, oh, that's so right? Yeah. But in about like combating female genital mm-hmm. mutilation in oh, wow. South Africa or in Africa. Yeah. And she, in her 70s, started, and she has made huge strides in changing policy and, right? But she's like, I'm just doing this as retiree. I'm like, yeah. but she <laughs> literally changed the lives. Dedicated energy. But that's the yeah. lives yeah. of these young women in Africa who are, you know, going through this, like oh, changing yeah. the law so that like female, you know, mm-hmm. genital mutilation is now outlawed. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. to me, I'm like, she's my hero because she's like, she started yeah. in her 70s and she made yeah. this incredible, you but know, that's, impact. There you go. You know, I, you can have the creative and you can do good and you, you can do all the things. Yeah. Like you said, yeah. Yeah. No, and no, that's, like, that's the hope. It's like, how can we impact the world? I hope to continue bringing stories to to the world and giving voices to other people who may not have them. Yeah. And it sounds like this is what this woman did. So, yeah, that's very inspiring. And I think that's all we can hope to do and keep on that. Man, I love you guys. We love you, you too. You ladies. <laughs> this is one more time. And we love the beer. I love the beer. Oh, the beer. I want I'm another beer. Two. I want another choice, beer. Right? I'm another beer. Yeah, this another watermelon beer. one's pretty amazing. Yeah. Actually. What am I opening here? Mango uh, lemonade. Yep, there it is. Touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> this is the whole point of this podcast. You know, like a lot of times people are always trying to push a point. My point is that we're great enough as we are. Let's just put a Bunch of minds that have something to share with each other. Mm-hmm. Maybe our friends are those people. Then let's have a beer. Yeah. yeah. And this is why I love this. So because the bonding over the beer. Boom. Again, meeting of the minds. Yep. Brilliant. I dig it. I, I dig, dig it dig. too. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. I want to go ahead and take this time. Any shout outs? Where can they follow you? If you got your services, if someone's trying mm-hmm. to hire you, they want to <laughs> give research, can they hit you up? What's their follows? Where do they find you? Well, I am um, right now. I freelance produce. <laughs> <laughs> Touchdown! I finally did. I was rolling ash. You got a <laughs> 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 I rolled an ash. <laughs> 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 Um, 
But obviously I'm on LinkedIn, so I'm under Joyce Countryman. I did this experiment where I took oh, off. Oh, yes. Because I was getting all those, like, those fake quickly. profiles, yeah. right? From like the Chinese, like Chinese profiles. They're yeah. trying to like LinkedIn with me. All the fake ones. So I took out my last name, Lou. And now I stopped getting them. Yeah. Like the bots were looking for my last name. Yeah. Oh, so the, bots, the bots, the bots. The bots. bots. But anyways. So on the LinkedIn bots, right the bots, now, the bots, the bots, the bots, the bots, the bots. damn those bots. The bots. <laughs> um, but on LinkedIn, I'm Joyce Countryman, but I'm mostly, I don't really do Instagram. My, your Instagram game is so much better than mine. But that's part of my job, girl. I know, <laughs> I gotta do, I gotta job. do that. It should be part of my job. And it's still private. Hey, well, I will do it for you. Oh, I will do okay, that Okay, let's talk. Man, we'll talk. I love this. I, will t- <laughs> I can't tell you how many times people have met on this thing, or even if they didn't meet, just the ideas popped up. And it was like, yeah, let's go do that. Well, here's the thing about social media. I, I do hate it for a lot of different reasons, but I actually do manage these things for other people whom I love because I, as much as I hate it, I think it for a show like yours, anybody who, who is an entrepreneur and doesn't have $40,000 to expend on a marketing budget as it once were, they can do it this way if they do it, you know, with a strategy. And I think it, I've seen it be so helpful for people. So that, again, that's the part of it that I love because I'm helping other people get out into the world and share their voices or their ideas. That's the part that I love. And I will always do that. So that's part of what I do. I but you can that. find. I dig that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like, help, help the people who are actually trying to help others and do something. That yeah. I'm always for. But um, no, you can find me on Instagram. It's Ash underscore Hall 13. My name is very generic, so it's hard to find. <laughs> Ash underscore Ash Hall, Hall 13. 13. I got to pick out it. underscore, underscore Hall 13. 13. Uh, it's the 13th hall of the underscore batch. And I, I am at, and I'm at Joyce Lou Countryman on Instagram. Joyce L-I-U Countryman. There we go. So, no, and then I'm on, I have a website, Ashley G. Hall. And then from there, you can find my business website, everything else. So Yeah. So, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, if y'all need any uh, anything as far as these ideas that we st- uh, stalked, um, <laughs> talked about today. Man, I love good beer. I love craft beer. I love... <laughs> It's working. Wait, 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 wait. What are you up to next, Ashley? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, well, um, the hope, so I, like I said, I've started venturing into directing, so I'm actually doing a lot of producing, directing, loving that. We just finished some scripts that we've taken some, I'm taking some meetings on, so that's the hope. We get to, I'll be able to direct and produce and, the scripts. And, and if they wanted to see anything that y'all worked on or stuff like that, what are some of the things? Because like, <laughs> it, there's so, there might be some Sony things. There might not be some things. There might. In which? Wh- what are we alluding no to? Like, like if anyone wants to see y'all's projects that y'all did, so as producers. Fair enough. AshleyGHall.com. That's got all that there. Okay. Um, and it has some of my work that I've done for brands like cool. Disney and, 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 your, own, and, it's and got, your own stuff. Pardon me. And your own stuff. Yes. So it'll have a link to the Queerdo Circle because I have my other the, the marketing side of my business. So the yep. Queerdo Circle, it, it's also on there. For me, I've got I've got a film and festival on the festival run right now called White Now Please. I've got another one we were just submitting to festivals called uh, uh, Don't Be Sorry. I've got a project over at Sony that's developing with Ken Jong as EP. <laughs> Um, so hopefully we'll see how that goes. It's an adult animation show. And then we've got another one I just attached Margaret Cho to. Man. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, two days ago. Yes. Hey, I don't know what's going to happen. I didn't even know about this. Yeah. Yes. So um, that's a new one. And then we've got a feature coming. We're feature we're shooting next year in, in San Antonio. We got, I got a lot going no. on my independence slate. I you still... know I'm from San Antonio. Shut the front door. I am from San Antonio. My son, my my mother, everyone's from San Antonio. I kind of thought you were just from everywhere. But I, I tend to claim that. It keeps me universal. <laughs> but like, if we're going to talk specifically, yeah, yeah. I'm, I didn't know I graduated either. from San Antonio. What the hell? Shut the okay. front door. Okay, yeah. we got to talk. Cause, yeah. Yes. There it is. I'm going to um, come hang out with you guys. I'll just be your roadies or groupies. I don't know. People are of our production team. There <laughs> Um, Put me in charge of crafty. I like the food. <laughs> <laughs> it's my set. We'll have good crafty. Yeah. Um, and also I'm doing consulting. So I'm still doing like in diversity, equity, and inclusion for entertainment consulting. Dope. So. I'm, yeah, guys, no I'm, excuses anymore. I'm Why are you doing that? for that. So you have a, a, a consultant in your phone. Oh. Depending on what type of projects you're working on. But they're all producers. So well, let's dog there. We're, 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 we have some we discussions. Have, Ladies and, I ladies see many more beer gentlemen. meetings in our future. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and not uh, keep your ears ringing too much. 
You know where to find them. This is Jai Pellerin here with another episode of Beer with Friends. These are my girls from AFI producing the world. I'm going to go ahead and look. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Uh, meanwhile, shout out to Figueroa Mountain, Santa Barbara, Mango Lemonade Shandy. We got the hibiscus, the watermelon, and the citrus. Yeah, Do- we follow Figueroa on because I'm really digging this. Figueroa Mountain? Yeah. Figaro Mountain. Just, fi- fig- just straight Figaro Mountain. You're, okay. you're going to find them on Instagram. Oh, okay. You're going to find them in a couple of places. Just doing that plug for you. <laughs> like, oh, where, oh, okay. where, where are we finding them? Oh, no, no, no. They, they, they're going to find us. In, <laughs> there we in go. their dreams <laughs> of beautiful bliss of beer. I love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I dig it. I just go with I dig it. It's easy. <laughs> I dig that too. <laughs> All right, ladies, All right. thank you thank so much. You. And we'll catch you next time on Beer with Friends.